You think you've got what it takes? I call us. Welcome back everyone, Mean Poo here, and this is an update on the panel that I installed on the Acer Nitro 5. After making the tutorial, I wanted to try and fine tune the panel and make it look its best. I'm going to show you everything I went through to get it done. First, I headed over to the Windows button and typed Display Settings. Once open, I clicked Advanced Display Settings, then Display Properties for Display 1. When the window pops up, I chose the third tab called Color Management. After clicking the Color Management button, another window popped open with the Display Device 1. Moving down the screen, I chose a profile and set it as my default profile. If your profile section is blank, click the Add button and choose a profile that is installed on your machine. Now I'm going to head over to the Advanced screen and click the Display Calibration button. You'll be presented with a screen that will walk you through on how to adjust the brightness, color, contrast, and gamma. Some of these tests will not work on the Acer Nitro 5 as we only have the one button and that is the brightness. One thing to note is that while you may be able to see where I'm adjusting the brightness, it will make no difference on your screen. If I would have externally recorded the adjustments, you would be able to see the difference. I'll just show you a little bit and then move on. This next part will let you adjust the way text is seen on the screen. Some monitors could be slightly out of focus and this will help. If your monitor is out of focus, I would actually send it back. There's no calibration software that's going to help it. And since it's new, you would be wasting your money. Anyway, you'll be able to see the choices I picked, but it may look different on your screen. This is tailored to one's eyes and their personal display. After the text adjustment, I just wasn't completely satisfied. So I went and found a site that lets you do a monitor test. The site was called ezo.be or iso.be. I'll put the title of it at the bottom of the screen. Anyway, I know I didn't pronounce it correctly. But let's go ahead and move on. There are plenty of tests here to help you find out if your screen is having a problem. Like the earlier tests, you will not be able to see what I saw because it is screen captured. I'll briefly run through them for you. The defective pixel test will make the screen one color so you can see if a dead or stuck pixel exists. Unfortunately for me, I had one. You can't see it on a screen, but I took a video of it with an external recording device right here. The gradient test lets you check to see if the colors are even from left to right and right to left. There is also a steps button that lets you make the bars thicker and smaller so you can really identify artifacts. This is the response times test. I really didn't need to do this as I have done the test before in the installation video. This is the test pattern test. You can see if there is any bleeding or jagged edges, etc. Lines should be straight and gradients should be smooth. The gamma test lets you adjust the gamma value. You have to blend the logo into the background to get the gamma value. And if I done it correctly, the value of this panel is 1.1. This is the uniformity test. It tries to see if there is any fluctuations in color. It wants to make sure that if a brightness is set at a certain level, that it's even across the screen from left to right, up and down. There shouldn't be lighter, like you have the color, say orange. You know, the whole, the, the whole screen should be orange and then you get halfway through and then it, it turns to green or a light orange. It shouldn't be anything like it. It should be smooth all the way across. The last test I done was the color distance test. It makes sure that your monitor can show similar colors while keeping them differentiable. You create two colors of your choice. They can be as close together like pink and light pink or as far from one another such as black and white. The more similar the two colors that can be differentiated from one another are, the better your monitor can differentiate between the colors. With all those tests done, I went back to my screen and I looked at it. Besides the dead pixel that I found, 
the colors looked really nice and vibrant. Still, I wasn't satisfied. There has to be a manufacturer of this panel, and they should have a custom profile for it. So, I went back to Amazon and got the manufacturer whose name was Enolux. A quick search landed me on the Enolux page, which described what a TFT LCD was. Searching the site resulted in no profiles for the panel that I purchased. So I was pretty much stuck. Nowhere could I find a profile, and I've looked all over the place. So I remembered that I had some software on my machine called Hardware Info 64. I opened it up and it gave me the actual name of the panel. This was something that the Amazon listing failed to show. Its name was listed as Chowmei CMN15F4. Again, I believe I'm butchering these names. Anyway, I wasn't worried too much about the digits, this, just the name. I searched for the name plus the model number on Amazon, and that search landed me on some eBay sites, which pretty much the same model number, but my panel was missing the 3D at the end. I noticed that the panel I owned had the letters EDP, and the 3D must be some feature of the panel. Anyway, searching on down the listing, it said that it is a replacement for the MSI GT62 GE63. So those two machines. I went back to the Amazon listing, <laughs> I know, and sure enough, the title had those numbers, had those numbers in it. So I was getting kind of happy. So now all I have to do is find that model number of the MSI gaming laptop. After an exhaustive search, I landed on notebookcheck.net in which they reviewed the MSI GE63 VR Raider. So we got another uh, couple of letters in our VR. Those numbers matched the Amazon and the eBay listing, so I knew I was on the right track. After reading the article, I got to the display section and they have the profile link that they used. Wow, I was really happy at this point. I proceeded to download the profile and head it back to my machine because I was using my other computer. So to add the profile, we are going to do the same thing in this order. Start, settings, display settings, advanced display settings, display adapter properties, color management after the pop-up, then color management, then add at the bottom of the screen. If you do not see your profile, then browse for it. When you find it, select it and hit add. Now select the profile you want and it should be in your list. If you add it and it does not show up, just go back to your list and add it again. When finished, set it as your default profile and close. You should get a prompt telling you that something has changed in your computer like your profile or something to do with color and you just go ahead and hit OK. So here are some pictures that I try to take with different profiles. I'm sorry for the shoddy work but I don't think I have the proper equipment to do this and this is just to give you an idea. Anyway as you can see each time the profile is changed there is slight color variances. I like the one from Notebook Check and I'll be using this one from here on out. In closing, if the video helped you, feel free to like and subscribe. There is also a list of all my hardware in the description box. If you would like to support the channel, buy from the links I have provided. And I'll see you next time. Mean Poo, out.